today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to change out the rear brake pads on your Lexus IS350. So, let's do it. First thing you want to do when it comes to doing your brake pads is always chock your car and if you're jacking it from the rear make sure you jack it from your diff or your rear axle i've jacked it from my diff and it's the rear axle that i put my jack stand under it. the jack stand is to give you peace of mind that if anything were to happen you are safe that nothing will land on you and cause you any harm the first step to changing your rear brake pads is obviously to remove your wheels it takes a 21 mil socket and we use a breaker bar to break it loose Lefty loosey, righty tidy. Okay, so we go left. Loose. Okay, that's it. Now that they're all breaking loose, we can now use our impact gun or whatever you want to use, impact wrench, and take off all the nuts. Another reason why I love this 21mm socket is also because it has this plastic cover so it prevents you from scratching your wheels where your nuts go and then we remove the wheel okay so the first thing we need to do before we do anything else is pry between the brake pad and the rotor and just to give it some room so we simply just put a pry bar in there or a, or a screwdriver and pry Slowly pry, just a little bit at a time until you get some room. Okay, see how it, the, now it's loose? Now we can get our tool in there and pry it. Now we've got a little room, you get your screwdriver in between and just pry, pry against the brake pad more than the rotor. And you just want to separate it so you have enough room to release your brake pads. That's it. Now with that done, we can now release our clips. Okay, so first we have our clip up here. So we pull this out, this way. That comes out, okay? We release this side. And that's one clip there. And we should have another clip just here. Okay. There's the middle out. And then we get the top out and the bottom out so this sits inside here and these two pins these clips here sit inside these guide pins now with that out we can take out our guide pins and that will come out now release the top guide pin now we can release our 19 mil bolts as you can see, it's not really that tight. Release it, 19 mil, all the way out. Undo it. And once it's out, our brake pads will just fall out. And there we go. Brake pads removed. Have a look at my brake pads right now. They were just about done. Look how much, look how much was left. Barely anything. Even though this side has a lot left, this side had barely anything. We'll grab our new brake pads. Make sure that your shims are on. As you can see here, these shims are stuck together. So we'll separate the shims. We'll put the shims on. There we go, shim on. Shim on this one as well. It only goes one way. Beautiful, all right. With the grease that they provide you, you want to put some on all parts that touch metal to metal. So this is going to touch against here and the brake rotor as well. We'll put some on the back, wherever it touches metal to metal. We'll also put some on the guide pins. Clean the guide pins first with some brake cleaner. Okay. Beautiful. Just dry that off real quick. There we go. I just want to show you how they went in. Okay, so this is the brake pad now. And the guide pin sits up top. And you notice this hole here. There's a little hole here. That's how this sits in like that. 
and then your brake pad would go in like so and this would sit inside it like that and then your other guide pin would sit in like so and it would sit inside the guide pin like this there we go so that's how it would sit back inside okay you notice how it sits inside the holes for the guide pins and then this clip sits inside the center hole like that that's how it goes back in together and then the other one I'll show you how it goes on once we put it together but remember that that's what these holes in the guide pins are for and so when you go to remove it you have to remove it from the holes from the guide pins and then pry it out needle nose pliers help a lot as well we'll now also remove our 19 mil bolt we'll put some uh, grease on this too Okay, beautiful, perfect. For this part here, you don't have to use this tool specifically. You could just use a G-clamp in order to help you push the piston in. But I use this just because I have it. Put this in here, like so. That will sit in like that. And then we will turn this until it pushes our piston for our brake caliper all the way back in. That way we have room to put our calipers back in. There we go, all the way back in now, and then we loosen it. And this is um, reverse thread, so you go counterclockwise to push the piston in, and then clockwise to pull it back. And that's it. And that's how that simply goes together. We can now put on our new brake pads, and we'll put our guide pins in as well. One on this side, and one on the other side. Only go one way, as you can imagine. There we go. So we get our brake grease, put it on our guide pins. Nice amount, there we go. And we slide it on in. Get our other one in. There we go. And it will come out through the other side and sit inside where it's supposed to. You notice where the guide pin is now? We need to get it all the way back, all the way through. And that guide pin is not going in, so let's try the bottom one. You need to mess with it a bit up and down until you get it just in the right spot. Okay, there we go. Get it in the bottom one as well. There we go, that's in. Grab the other guide pin put some grease on it of course just to help it slide back and forth as it needs to perfect and now we will put this back in there we go and there we go guide pins back in with the guide pins back in we can now replace our 19 mil bolt. Okay, we'll put our bolt back in and we will tighten it. That's in. We'll just tighten it by hand first. And now we will use our ratchet and tighten it all the way down. All right, nice and tight. Now to last thing to put our clips back in all right so we made a mistake because we need to put these clips back in first and they go in this way this will be on the inside of the pad like so so we'll pull this out put this back in push it together make sure that the guide pins go through these holes like so put them back in like that and that's it now this clamps over the top and the clip goes to the center like this just like that look at that that was easy wasn't it and now for the last one this sits on this side here now remember 
you have two guide holes that this needs to sit in okay and this sits in like this so we'll put one side in first there we go one side's in we'll push in the middle and then we will now get in no we won't push in the middle we'll bend it down so we get this side in first okay you just have to find the hole and push it the pin push the clip through it there we go we're back in now and then we push this back inside okay so we go in and then we find the hole that it goes in there we go and then we turn this back over and look at that perfect everything back in the way that it was now look I know it's a bit loose at the moment but that's not a problem the reason why it's like that is because we push the piston back in so now all we have to do is pump the brakes and this piston will come back out and grip onto our brake pads once again and that's it so right now I'm gonna go pump the brakes and you're going to see this piston come back out again see this piston here that's gonna come all the way back out again and push the calipers back together make sure that you go in the car and you pump your brakes again or else you're not going to have any brakes and all we do is we pump until we get stiff this will bring the piston back out and allow you to brake instantly once you press on the brake okay and now it's really stiff so we know our piston has come all the way back out again So as you saw just then, the piston pushed it all the way back out again and these brake pads are tight once again. We'll put the wheel back on, go for a test drive and make sure everything is swell. And then of course, once you've done pressing the piston back out, be sure that you check your brake fluid and make sure that none of it has spilled. And if it has, be sure to clean it up real nice and tidy. In this case, we haven't got any spilled brake fluid at all, so we are pretty much good. The reason why your brake fluid may spill is due to somebody topping it up when um, they thought that it was low. If your brake fluid looks like it's overfilled, you can always use something like a plastic syringe and simply just withdraw some out and squirt it out. Make sure that it is at the right level after you've pumped your brakes for a little bit. You know, make sure you've greased everything and uh, make sure everything put back together. Your 19mm bolts back on, your guide pins are in, you've greased all the metal contacts. You can now put back your wheel, make sure it's all lined up and put back our wheel. Now when you put back your wheel, you want to make sure that your nut is centered. If you don't center it, your nut isn't going to go in all the way and your wheel will be loose. We'll put on all our nuts now. Okay, now I'm using this impact driver, but I'm not going to go far. I'm just going to put it on so it's just seated. Notice how I'm just going slow because I don't want to go fast and accidentally thread it. All right, we'll give it a little bit of tighten with this, but not too much because this won't tighten it enough as it doesn't have the right amount of power to do it there we go and now we'll use our breaker bar to tighten it so once it's snug I pretty much just go like another quarter turn all right so we are snug now and I'm just gonna go a little bit more and that's it skip one always go in a star pattern when you're tightening your nuts skip one next one all right that's it that's all you need to go skip one snug and then tighten that's it that's all you need skip one snug and then a little bit more skip one snug and then a little bit more and that's it that's all you need to do we are done now that we have finished we're going to remove our jack stand first so we'll jack it up just a little bit and then we'll take out our jack stand as you can see I've just Put the jack stand right where the rear axle is. Bring the car back down. 
make sure there is nothing else underneath the car okay nothing else that will damage it if I let the car down nice and slow nice and slow and that's it look at that perfect now we'll pull the jack out we'll put away our tools we'll also remove our chocks we'll remove our second chock there we go put that aside we'll take the car for a test run and ensure the brakes are working as they should just a word of advice now i'm told that due to the chemicals that they place on the brake pads and the disc rotors sometimes when you first install your brake pads you're supposed to drive to about 60 70 kilometers an hour and brake very hard so that it takes off the first layer which they spray a protectant onto in order to keep it from rusting etc they also do this to the brake rotors as well so it's a good idea if you drive to about 60 70 kilometers per hour whatever that is in miles per hour and then brake really hard do this about three four times and you should be good to go so we're going to take the car for a spin now and make sure everything is the way it should be and there you have it guys how to change out the rear brake pads on your 2011 lexus is 350. i also wanted to point out that if there is something in this video that i haven't done according to the specifications of lexus or you know uh, according to the methods of a professional mechanic please let me know in the comment section below i would love to get any feedback of what i'm doing wrong or what what i am missing like i always say i am not a professional mechanic and i simply learn to diy myself by watching other people's videos and also doing some research online i never claim to know it all and it would be ignorant of me to claim that i know everything because honestly not everyone in this world would know everything and if you're not learning something every day then obviously you're not trying hard enough that is my philosophy that every day we should be learning something new or at least try to learn something new if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and as always don't forget to like share comment subscribe ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads until next time guys this is mike with mikey's vlog signing off i'll see you in the next one